Hi everyone, welcome to the Tech Insights Power of the Chip series, where we're going to be doing a bit of a deep dive on some of the hot topics in the semiconductor space. My name is Jason, I'm the CTO, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, or SMIC for short. But to start with, we're going to talk a little bit about some basics of the chip. Now, I'm going to get back to SMIC, but the basics are kind of important. So, well, Let's start with the fundamentals of a chip. They are made up of small electrical switches, lots of wiring. And the smaller you can make those electrical switches, transistors, if you will, the more you can pack onto a chip. And today's chips have thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, even billions of these switches, these transistors. Now, there's a lot of reasons why you want to make them smaller. Again, you put more on the chip, more functionality in a given area, it's good. In fact, if you do it right, the electrical switches can flip back and forth faster, which means if you're building a processor, the processor can run at higher frequencies, do more calculations per second. Now, there's some downsides. If you don't make them right, these transistors, these switches can be leaky. In other words, they're more like a dimmer switch than a full off on. So if you're working in a battery environment, maybe not so good. You think the switch is off, but actually it's still some current going through. Not exactly what you want. So how you structure these small transistors, well, that's pretty important. So how do you measure them? Well, we're down in the nanometer scale. And if you take a look at where TSMC, Samsung, Intel, some of the biggest semiconductor manufacturers in the world are, they're now making full or volume production chips at the five nanometer node and four nanometer node. Even the three nanometer node, we're expecting probably mid to later in 2023. So where does SMIC come into all of this? Well, SMIC is a semiconductor manufacturer as well, hence the name. They are based in China. And for quite a long time, they have been three or four generations behind the leaders that I just mentioned. Now, they've been in the news lately because this year, uh, we at Tech Insights actually found they were producing at seven nanometer, which is, well, just a small leap about, uh, over to where the leaders are at five and four nanometers. This is really impressive in its own right. Now, in today's geopolitical environment, it's even more impressive because there are a lot of sanctions limiting what technology can get into China. So a lot of people are scratching their heads and wondering, how was SMIC able to produce these seven nanometer chips in light of all of the limitations that they have? Well, let's talk a little bit about the foundry environment. So again, foundries are, are factories. This is a term for where chips are made. These are multi, multi-billion dollar factories that have incredibly sophisticated tool sets. The R&D to get from one node to another, say from 10 nanometer to seven or seven to five or five to three, well, that development time can take years, years and years. And so when we take a look at where SMIC is today at seven nanometer, in fact, that technology has been under development at SMIC for, well, at least three, four, possibly even five years, well before these sanctions were ever in place. So still pretty impressive, but the sanctions didn't actually really come into play. Will they in the future? Well, that's not really for me to comment, um, but obviously it's going to be more challenging for them to do that. So Let's talk about some of those bigger challenges, uh, especially in light of those sanctions. A lot comes down to something called lithography. So one of the important steps in the chip manufacturing process is to create the patterns of the features. You can kind of think of this as a very sophisticated stencil. Um, and by sophisticated, I mean really sophisticated. If you are making these tiny seven nanometer features, well, you need a patterned mask, stencil, um, kind of that follow along those tiny geometries. And even more important, because this is patterned using light, you need light at very specific frequencies or wavelengths to go through the mask and pattern the chip or the wafer actually underneath. Now, 
at 10 nanometer, again, this is kind of a couple of generations back from the leader, the industry was using something called deep ultraviolet or DUV. So a very specific wavelength of ultraviolet light. Now, you are now talking about extreme UV, even sort of more advanced. It turns out that seven nanometer is kind of in a sweet spot or maybe not so said so much, but uh, in the very edge of what DUV uh, or deep UV is capable of. So although we're seeing today Samsung, TSMC using extreme UV, the next next generation of these lithography tools making the seven, five, and now to be three nanometer parts, SMIC was actually able to get away with using the previous gen, this, this DUV, if you will, which weren't under sanctions, widely available, again, it's kind of no surprise they were able to do it. Again, I, I don't want to belittle the, the technology sophistication uh, and the R&D program that SMIC had to employ to get to this point. But fundamentally, there was nothing stopping them from getting to seven nanometer. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the geopolitical situation today. Um, again, just a little bit. So where in the world are these chips being made? As I said, SMIC is based in China. Samsung, in fact, has foundries all over the world. TSMC, based in Taiwan, uh, they are building out infrastructure in other regions, um, including in the US, discussions in Europe. So worldwide phenomenon. The equipment manufacturers are also scattered all over the world. One of the most important right now is a company called ASML. ASML is the one that makes those lithography systems, the DUV and EUV or extreme UV. In fact, ASML is really the only commercial provider of EUV uh, systems in the world. And they are Dutch, but still um, are in compliance with the US sanctions. So limited in what they can provide, for example, to China. So. What will happen as, say, an SMIC wants to go from seven to five? Well, it's hard to say. Of course, the geopolitical climate could change. But in fact, we're also seeing some interesting innovations going on in alternatives to EUV. Uh, and in fact, if you are on the Tech Insights platform, you can actually read some of our latest analysis of patenting activity around the world, but also in China specifically, on how companies like SMIC might be able to get around some of the challenges of not having access to this EUV technology. Well, that's it for me for today. Stay tuned for more in our series where again, you'll be able to hear a little bit more context around some of the hot topics in semiconductor industry today. Thanks very much.